Hello, my name is Jerry Yu. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Please click the like and subscribe button. This will help me tremendously with YouTube algorithm. As of this recording today, March 2023, we are in the beginning of the banking crisis. Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank just went bankrupt. And we are expecting more bank to fail in the coming month. I have received many phone calls from clients in the last two weeks inquiry about the safety of their life insurance policies and annuity policies. So I wanted to record this video talking about the one major difference between the bank and an insurance company. This one major difference is going to teach you a lot about why a bank is much more riskier than a life insurance company. When you give the money, also this tells you a lot about the safety mechanism that are in place and why you should feel safe when you give money to an insurance company. See, we all know that during the Great Depression, that there was a run on the bank. The bank didn't have enough money to pay back to people that gave them the money, and people lost an incredible amount of money. Banks are an important financial institution in our entire system, and they have to exist with how our system works. So the federal government came along and created the FDIC in order to restore consumer confidence and make sure that if they gave money to a bank, that money will never be lost. See, everybody knows about this. You see it on commercial, you see it on TV ads. I mean, everything that you see has FDIC anytime you talk about banks. The question that always come up when we're talking about insurance product is about what type of protection are in place in order to make sure that the same type of things doesn't happen with the insurance companies. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is the one major difference between a bank and an insurance company. The one thing determines why one is taking much more risk than the other institution. This is because a bank is making a profit through this idea, this concept, or this uh, mechanism of leverage. See, when you give money to a bank, they're only required to put 10% of that money on deposit. The rest of that money, they can do whatever they want with it. See, they can loan it out, uh, they could do mortgage loans, or when somebody swipe a credit card, they're going to pay to a merchant and then charge that credit card holder an interest rate. See, all these are ways that they can take the money you gave them and make a profit on it. See, the problem with this is that leverage is risky. And there's an incentive for these banks to take more risk by having more leverage because they want more profit. This is exactly why you have to have FDIC to make sure that people have confidence to give bank more money because they are inherently risky. Insurance companies are a completely different financial institution and they make a profit totally different than banks which is why they're so much safer. An insurance company makes money on something called a spread, simply as that. The way the spread work is that if an insurance company is going to guarantee a policyholder, let's say a 1% interest rate, well, the insurance company, let's say, can earn 2% on that money that you gave them, the difference between those two numbers, which is called the spread of 1%, and that's the profit that the insurance company makes. What this means is that the insurance company put a lot more money into their reserve than the bank is required to keep the deposit when you give each institution the money. Since 2007, which was the last financial crisis, per the FDIC website, 532 banks have gone into protection from the FDIC. Uh, from the same period of time until today, only 19 insurance companies have gone into a receivership. See, I'm going to talk about exactly what happened to these companies and show you why anybody who had money with these insurance companies was still made whole through the protection that are available through insurance. The second thing I wanted to talk about is give you a very simple example of how an insurance company works. So this is, this is very simplified, but remember first that when talking about this, a bank is leveraged generally 10 to 1. If you give a bank $100,000, they're only uh, putting $10,000 on deposit, an insurance company is much more different. Let's say that you give an insurance company $100,000, okay, and they're guaranteeing you 1%. 
That 1% is not guaranteed for the next year or the year after. It's guaranteed usually further out into the future. See, in this example, I'm going to use 10 years. So they are going to guarantee you 1% for 10 years, which means that they are going to owe you $110,000 10 years in the future. So how much money does that insurance company have to put in their company reserve to make sure that they have enough money for you in the future? Well, in this example, that would be $74,624. So you can see they are putting so much more money into reserve relative to a bank, which is why they are safer. But an insurance company is not going to simply just put $74,000, but then they need to prepare for any type of strains or stress that happen in the economy or with their business. So they are going to put more than $74,000. They might be putting eighty or even $81,000 into reserve. This is one of the main things that determine the rating and the financial strength of an insurance company is how much money they choose to put into their company reserve. This is why when your financial advisor or insurance agent recommends a particular insurance company, you need to know the financial rating of that particular company. So if an insurance company is highly rated like A plus or A plus plus, it means that they, are choose, they choose to put more money into reserve to make sure that no matter what, they are going to be able to pay it to you in the future. Now what determines this number 74,624 is based off the interest rate that insurance company pays that they can earn. So you give money to an insurance company. They're going to take that money and they're going to put it into their general portfolio. Within their general portfolio, uh, they're going to have a basket of thousands and thousands of investment. These investments are going to be things like a corporate debt, government debt, treasury bills, bonds, uh, things like that. So you put these all into this basket or the general portfolio and this insurance company says that they're currently earning 4%. That's how you get to this number because that 4% will yield $110,462. And that is why insurance company put more in reserve. And the second thing that determines the insurance company rating is this number. If one insurance company come along and say, hey, listen, we can offer you a much more guaranteed income for the rest of your life, but their rating is much lower. That insurance company might say, well, it's because we can earn 5% in our general portfolio. What that means is that insurance company is taking more risk with those investments, which means that they can default at a much higher rate, which also means that they put less money into reserve. So that's how they're able to do it. See, they take more risk and they put less into reserve and then they pay out more income. So you just have to keep in mind when you are looking at the rating of an insurance company. You definitely want to have a highly rated insurance company for anything that's going to be provide you some sort of guarantee. Now, the next question that you probably think is, well, okay, what happened if uh, money goes bad in the insurance company's portfolio? Or they're not able to earn that 4% rate of return? Well, essentially, that's what happened to some of these 19 insurance companies. Maybe the money that they actually had to put out in the future ended up being much more than they originally anticipated. And that's why these companies went into receivership. What happened to those companies that go into receivership? First, I mentioned again, all these people who still get paid the money that owes to them. The insurance company always paid that money, which is a very important thing to know. I wanted to first talk about FDIC because that's the thing that most of us are familiar with. The FDIC, the I and the C in FDIC stands for insurance company. So it's an insurance company that insures against banking banks going insolvent. I think that kind of gives you an example of why insurance companies are safer than bank. But insurance companies do have a safety mechanism as well. They have something it's called the State Guarantee Association. And every single state, no matter where you live, is going to have their own individual state guarantee association. And they all have different protection limits and things like that. You can find out more information at this website, which is the national website, which is no 
lhga.com. It's a great website, has really good information on exactly what I'm talking about today. Well, if one of these 19 companies was not able to have enough money, then what happened is all these insurance companies in the entire country, they come together and then they pay money into the state guarantee fund. State guarantee fund proportional to the size of the company and how much premium they write in that state. They make sure that they make these companies whole as that policyholder receive all the money that they are guaranteed. It's a self-insurance mechanism. All the insurance companies insure each other. So if one goes bad, then all of other ones will make sure that the claim are paid. See, so during the modern era of insurance, no policyholder ever lost any money that was promised to them through life insurance or death benefit or guarantee on annuity contract. And that's the mechanism that to be maintained for the last 120 years. See? When you are going to make a decision about purchasing something from an insurance company, whether it's an annuity or a life insurance policy, it's super important that you look at the insurance company's rating. You might be told by an insurance agent or financial advisor says, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a B-rated company. It does matter because that B-rated company is taking a little bit more risk. If an insurance company is going to be providing you a death benefit that might not happen for 30 or 50 years, or if that insurance company is giving you a lifetime income for your entire life and your spouse's life, you want to make sure that you have a company that's putting enough money in reserve and that is not taking too much risk on your money. And it's a highly rated company, A or better. It's extremely important to do that. And I think um, after watching this video, you understand why and how all of this work. If you like today's content, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you in future episodes. Thank you for watching.